All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to be going over the key concepts of Atomic Habits, a book written by James Clear. These concepts really helped change my life and form habits in a way that I've never really thought of before. So without further ado, let's get right into it. A common misconception is that deriving benefits from habits is a linear graph. This is not true. It's more like an exponential graph. The gap in between those two lines is what we call the valley of disappointment. This is why people feel so frustrated when they see how ineffective changes can seem during the first days, weeks, or even months of starting something. It takes patience and commitment. Nobody is wired just unable to feel bored by practicing the same things. Everyone has days where the boredom feels so loud and it seems pointless to keep going. The people who become successful are the ones who keep marching forward despite that. Becoming 1% better every day is really important. If you become 1% better than yesterday, you went from 1 to 1.01. If you became 1% worse than yesterday, you go from 1 to 0.99. This doesn't seem like a big difference, but it adds up over time. For example, let's say you continue in that direction for a whole year. If you become 1% worse every single day, you take 0.99 to the power of 365, you will get 0 0.03 versus if you get 1% better every day, you take 1.01 to the power of 365. This equals 37.78. That means that if you continue to get 1% better every single day for an entire year, you will end up being 37 times better than you were at the start of the year. Let's say you're practicing making videos and every single day you practice just tweaking something small to become 1% better. You will become that much better if you stick with those habits for that long of a period of time. So how exactly does a habit work? It's split into four parts, a cue, a craving, a response, and a reward. Let's say your habit is every single day after work, you like to unwind by playing video games. Your cue would be when you walk in the door and you see your controller sitting on the table. Your craving would be thinking of how nice it would be to unwind and play some video games. Your response is then to walk over, pick up the controller, turn on the TV, and sit on the couch and your reward would be the act of playing video games. How do you destroy bad habits? This is where we go into the four laws of behavior change. You have to one, make it invisible, two, make it unattractive, three, make it difficult, four, make it unsatisfying. And all of these line up to the cue, craving, response, and the reward. So let's use the example of video games. Let's say you waste a lot of time playing them and you wanna play them less. First, you want to make it invisible. Don't leave the controller on the table so that when you walk home from work, you don't see it and associate that in your mind. Then you would want to make it unattractive. Think about what you look like to your crush when you're sitting on the couch playing video games all the time versus how you would look working out. Think of how it makes you look lazy, less social, and think about how you don't get anything done with it. Three, make it difficult. Unplug your Xbox after every use and put the wires in a different room so that it makes it harder to get that response. Instead of being able to sit on the couch and just turn on the Xbox, you're gonna have to go into the other room, grab the wires, and plug them into the wall again. That increases friction, making it harder to do the habit and making you more likely to do something else instead. And then make it unsatisfying. Uninstall the games that are really fun to you and only keep the ones installed that you find pretty boring. That way the reward doesn't feel that satisfying after all, and you'd much rather do something else with your time. Now to form good habits, the inverse is true. Let's say you want to create a habit of swiffering your apartment more often. You want nice clean floors and you want a nicer, cleaner space. First, you're going to want to make it obvious. Place the swiffer in the living room instead of in the closet so that you can easily see it and pick it up when necessary. Two, make it attractive. Imagine your home smelling good and looking in tip top shape. Imagine how someone you're attracted to would react to seeing your home very clean versus very dirty. Three, make it easy. Not only have your Swiffer out in the living room, but have it right by the door so that when you walk in, the first thing you can do is just grab it because it's right there and Swiffer real quick. And four, make it satisfying. You can buy a scented pad for your Swiffer so that when you're doing it, it makes the room smell really nice and satisfying, making you wanna do it more and more because the smell is desirable. 
You can incorporate these things into your routine to make it easier to create the habit as well. Let's say your body hurts a lot and you want to create a habit of stretching more. Place the yoga mat in front of your closet so that when you're getting ready in the morning, because every single day you're going to go to your closet to get ready in the morning, the yoga mat is right there. And not only do you remember to stretch, but it's right there in front of you. So it makes it pretty hard to avoid doing and makes it much more easy and convenient. Goals don't matter. Your systems do. Goals get you nowhere because losers and winners both have the same goals. It's the systems you place behind those goals that really get you to where you want to be. Incorporating those previous four steps to create or destroy a habit along with the system in place will make you very well equipped. Anyone can have the goal to become fit, but the person who has a system in place, for example, six workouts a week, a specific training regime, a specific diet routine, is going to be much more successful than someone who just has the goal but no system at all. A lot of times it's hard to form a habit because it seems too intimidating. This is where you can incorporate the two minute rule to forming habits. The easiest way to start a habit is just to do two minutes of it. If you want to read more, wouldn't it be better to read two pages and stop versus not reading at all because reading for 30 minutes feels too intimidating? When I wanted to start running more often, the idea of getting off the couch and running a mile sounded nice on the surface, but I would never get around to it because it was a lot of work. It wasn't until I incorporated the two minute rule that I actually started running. Instead of running a whole mile, I decided I would just run a quick mile around my block, which instead of one mile was only one third of a mile. Half of the time, once I got to that one third of a mile mark around my block, I would decide to just keep going one or two more laps anyways, because I was already up. The same thing is true with reading. If I wanted to read but didn't feel like doing it, I would just tell myself, you know what, I'll only read two pages, and next thing you know, I've read a whole chapter. A lot of times it's hard to start things because they seem very intimidating in our minds. You don't always have to run the whole mile or read the whole chapter, but it's much better to do a little bit than to do nothing at all. It's crucial that you don't move backwards. Everyone has days where they forget to enforce their habit and they lose, but winners are quick to get back on their feet, so don't make losing a habit. Here's a quote by James Clear that I like a lot. Lost days hurt you more than successful days help you. If you start with $100, then a 50% gain will take you to $150, but you only need a 33% loss to take you back to 100. I'm going to wrap up the video with the Sorites Paradox. This states that if you give someone a coin, they are not rich. If you give them 100 coins, they are still not rich. But if you keep giving them one more coin over and over again, at some point, they will become rich. This is the same with a habit. One workout will not make you look fit. Ten workouts will not make you look fit. But at some point, when you keep stacking workout after workout, you will become fit. Habits are small changes that not only stack, they compound over time. Guys, I cannot recommend this book enough. If you like what you saw in this YouTube video, you should definitely go pick up a copy of this book because James Clear just goes more in depth into all these concepts and it's definitely worth a read. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, if you want to read helpful blogs for free, click the link in the bio of this YouTube video. We post new blogs every Wednesday and Sunday and incorporating some big changes very soon.